welcome to another short video. This one's on the lifespan of wind turbines and in this video and quite a few others actually I'm going to be relying on the work of Professor Gordon Hughes and a document you should all read is this one and the link is in the description. If you go through all of that uh, video that he's made uh, which was produced three years ago but has had very few views, less than a thousand, uh, my job is to uh, bring these stories to the public and what his work is, is, well it's extremely valuable work is all I can say and this video is based on that as will be many other videos so you could go in advance of me and just read the whole document or watch his whole video but here we go, the lifespan of turbines. Shock horror, wind turbines gradually wear out and they do it faster than you think explained many times from the videos, the load factor for a wind farm is the percentage, the actual electricity you get out of it in the real world, compared to a purely theoretical maximum. The maximum being every second of the year, blows perfectly and everything, you get 100%. What percentage of that do we get? That's the load factor. And typically for onshore wind farms in the UK, Ireland, etc., it's 26 to 30% in that sort of range. And um, the bigger ones, the higher ones, may get into the low 30s. So that's the load factor, but that doesn't stay the same. It actually deteriorates. These things wear out as they go, and they deteriorate at quite a rate, actually, around about 3% per year. And so what matters with load factors? No excuses. If it has to be stopped for maintenance, that reduces the load factor because it's a real-world measurement of what you get out. Now, Denmark has kept really good records of, of, of their turbines. And here is a diagram that explains a few things about them. And the results are quite remarkable. Now, this graph looks a bit complicated. It's a graph to, well, basically of the failure rate over time for wind turbines. And it's constructed from a, a large number of wind turbines in Denmark. On this vertical axis is well, how much is lost? How much of the energy? So consider them to be load factors. So we start off with, well, almost zero. So nothing is lost. We're getting the performance. And that seems to be the case here for about two years or almost two years. But as you go up that axis and you go to the very top, there'll be nothing left at all. There'll be no energy left at all. Now, there are four colours of curves. Um, the higher two are for offshore. Uh, and they're for old generation and new generation offshore. And the lower two are for onshore, again, old generation and new generation. The new generation higher turbine values, and this was constructed of turbines up to 8 megawatts, they're much worse than the older generation. They deteriorate much faster, and you can see that from the curves. So to read a curve, and this is quite amazing, let's look at what point you've lost 60% of the wind farm. What point do you lose 60% of the energy coming out the wind farm for offshore new generation? And the answer there is just 60 months, five years. So 60% of those offshore modern turbines have failed within five years. Obviously, they have to repair them all the time. And therefore, there's a big rising cost to all this. But looking quickly at what we get from inshore modern ones, which is the orange curve here, let's check when, well, let's say, 20% of the turbines have failed. That's one in of the five turbines in the Isle of Man. And that is at about 68 months, or around about, you know, five to six years, you can expect failures. So these things, they have to be repaired. These things put the costs up. So what are the, what are the running costs of these turbines? Well, this graph of one axis shows how many thousands of pounds per megawatt of installed capacity um, you actually pay out per annum. And the bottom line is the length of time, how much those costs rise over time. And as you can see, the lower, the lower line is the older generation and the top line, the newer generation, such as they'd be putting into the Isle of Man. So let's say, as an example, we take the Isle of Man. They're, they, they're going to install 20 megawatts worth. So let's look at the running costs. And these are in 2018 prices. So the costs have risen since then. Well, as you can see here, t taking the Isle of Man modern turbines, we start off at £74,000 a year per megawatt, and we end at about 100. 
£1,000 a year after 12 years per megawatt of installed capacity. So we start off with 74 times, in this case, 20 megawatts for the Isle of Man, which is 1.48 million a year, and we end up at a neat 2 million a year in running costs. And that keeps rising. And basically what we find is that after about 15 years, it's no longer worth maintaining the wind farm. Offshore wind, of course, is much more expensive, starting off at around about £200,000 a year and ending up at £400,000 a year per megawatt, three to four times the price of onshore. I am more than aware that that raises lots of questions and they will be answered in following videos. Why is it that if it's about 15 years and you've had it, some farms carry on beyond and so on? In essence, the whole thing seems to me to be a Ponzi scheme. It really does. And that will be explained in following videos. By the way, you can always, of course, go to the link for the video below. It's over an hour long and that will explain far more, especially with the questions and answers at the end of it, far more than I've explained in these few minutes. Thank you for watching. Bye.